Okay, so something that we do a lot in VBA is we loop through all the worksheets in our workbook. Now, if we, you know, if most people who've used VBA over time, they realize that there's multiple ways to achieve looping through all the worksheets in our workbook. So in this video, we're gonna cover the different methods of how we can loop through all of the worksheets in a given workbook. Now in my workbook, I already have some sheets populated. And my goal is just to loop through them and then just maybe change a cell value. So I'm gonna go in my BBA editor. I already got a module inserted. And in the first example, we're just gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna probably do one of the more uh, standard ways of doing it. And we're just gonna loop through the worksheets collection. So I'm gonna create a subroutine, call it loop through worksheets. And this is gonna be method one. I'm going to declare a variable. It's going to be called a worksheet. And then this is going to be a worksheet object. So in our workbook, we have individual worksheet objects. So each sheet is considered an object. And then this will allow me to reference each one of those worksheets. So I can uh, basically put each one of them as an object that I can reference. And then so what I'm going to do is now that I've set my variable, I'm going to loop through my worksheet. So I'm going to say for each worksheet in active workbook dot worksheets. Going to say go to the next worksheet, not net, next, next worksheet. And then, hey, while you're in that worksheet, set the range, I don't know, C3. Set that value equal to the worksheet dot name. So let's look at this. I'm using a for each loop. The for each loop allows me to basically iterate over each element of my group. Well, in this case, my group is a worksheets collection and each element is an individual worksheet in that group. And so this one is just looping through each of those worksheets. This is a collection. So I've said before, a worksheets collection is containing a bunch of worksheet objects. So a collection contains multiple objects. So in this collection, I have multiple individual worksheets. So these guys. And then all I'm doing is I'm just looping through them, setting the range C3 equal to worksheet.name. So when I run this, let's see what we get. Cool, sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and sheet four. So it worked just like we were expecting. Perfect, on to method two. Method two, not commonly used, but I think you should see it because I think there's something there that a lot of people would get confused on. This one's gonna be housing a sheets collection. And what I can do is I can set that worksheet collection equal to the active workbook dot worksheets. Now you might be asking the question. Up here, you said it's a worksheets collection. Why would you declare that as a sheets collection? Well, let's show you why. I'm going to declare that as a worksheets collection. I'm going to change this because it will technically work if I don't change that. Let's see what I get when I run this. Type mismatch, that doesn't make any sense. It's a collection, right? Not necessarily. So it was a little bit misleading. This is actually returning us something. It's returning us a sheets collection. So Technically, by defining this as a worksheets collection, this is saying, well, only the worksheets in my object, where this is saying, return a sheets collection, and the sheets collection contains both worksheets and chart sheets, so the, the sheets that actually contains charts. And so it's like, it's almost like on this side, we're saying, well, it's a sheets, but then on this side, we were saying, well, it's a worksheet. So which one is it? It's basically returning a type mismatch because it's saying, well, I don't know which it is. You're, you're saying one side's this and the other side's that, but they should both technically be the same. 
by changing this to a sheets collection, now this side will equal sheets collection, and then this side, the object we're being returned is a sheets collection, so this side will also be a sheets collection. So when I run it now, I get no error. I'm gonna run it again, I realize I had that cell filled out. So now it works fine. Great, let's do the next method. Method three. Method three, I'm gonna delete that, I'm gonna delete that, and in this one, I'm gonna use the this workbook method. So what is the this workbook method? Well, it's a little bit misleading. It's almost identical to this one, but this one I'm using the active workbook, where this one I'm saying this workbook. Well, what's the difference between this one and this one? This workbook refers to the workbook that contains this subroutine. That is very important to keep in mind. My subroutine, so this one, exists in the workbook that's called loop through sheets book. So I can run this script in this workbook. But if I was to put this in my personal macro workbook and I tried running it, hoping to see some changes on this workbook, it wouldn't happen. Because this subroutine does not exist in this one. It's existing in my personal macro workbook. So in order to make this one work, I have to put this subroutine as a module in this workbook. So if I run it now, we won't get an error, but if I had had this module in my personal workbook, I wouldn't see anything. And the weird thing is too, it wouldn't have produced an error because technically nothing was wrong. It's just you're referencing the wrong workbook. So that's a good one to keep in mind. It's a little bit tricky, but I think it's important for people to see it because you know most people don't realize that. And the next couple examples, so for method four and five and six, we're not gonna do four each loops. We're gonna do four loops. And so in order to do this, I am going to first delete this one. Now I'm gonna declare a variable called i, and this is gonna be an integer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, hey, go from i equals one. Well, I've gotta have a stopping point, like at which point should I stop in my in my loop, well, let's see how we can do that. I know I want to loop through all the worksheets in my workbook, in the active workbook, but is there a way I could count it somehow? Like, I have four, so I just, I want to loop four times. So I want to go one, then this one, then this one, then this one. If only there was a way I could count the number of worksheets in my workbook. Well, lucky for us, there's a property that does that. So I can call the count property, and this will return the number of worksheets in my workbook. So it's like this is saying for i equals 1 to 4. Well, I've still got to change a couple parts of my code. Well, now I can't reference a worksheet because I've deleted that variable. So now I'm going to have to go in the worksheets collection and then pass through the i. So this will just basically iterate over each worksheet and then I'll do something like, maybe we'll put the value being equal to hello, you know, something like that. And then I wanna to go to the next die. So it's gonna be the first worksheet in my worksheets collection, so sheet one, then the second worksheet in my worksheets collection, so sheet two, and so on. So let's run this and see what we get. Oh, cool, so now it changed all my values to hello, just like I was hoping. <clears throat> On to the next method. Now, nobody said that you had to go one right after the other. It's just very common to see it written like that. So in this one, I'm going one, two, three, and four. But say, for example, I wanted to go one, three, five, and so on. Well, in that one, I've got to introduce a new parameter. It's called step. And this basically tells me how many steps I should take between each quote unquote interval. Well, I'm gonna pass through two. And so what this will do is it will start at one, it will step to three, and then it will step to five. 
Well, in this case, I only have four worksheets, so we're only going to see two of them populated. But I'll show you by deleting all the values in them and seeing which ones are populated after I run this code. <clears throat> so let's see what we get when we do this. Oh, got to change my method name. This is the fifth one. Let's run it again. Okay, so the first sheet, that has a low. Skip the second one, that's correct. Put it in a third one, but then it skipped the fourth one. So cool. So now I was able to step over not each individual sheet, but I can now step in the interval that I want to. Well, what if I wanted to go in reverse order? So maybe I wanted to start at the last sheet and then go to the first sheet. Well, how would that look? Well, the nice thing is it's almost identical. I'm going to change this from two and I'm going to say go backwards one. So starting at the fourth sheet, go to three, then two, then one. I can also put in a two so I can skip every other two sheets going backwards. But the problem is that I've got to change my for loop a little bit. <clears throat> the reason why is I can't pass through a negative parameter in this one. And right now it's not making a lot of sense. It's saying go from one to four backwards. So not a lot of sense. What we want to do is go from four to one backwards. So I'm going to copy that one. I'm going to say go from the fourth sheet to the first sheet, but go backwards, not forward. Oh, forgot the method again. I keep skipping it. Okay. So now it populated all the sheets, but now it went from sheet four to sheet three to sheet two to sheet one. I don't know where I would really use this one too often, but I think it's good to know that we have the ability if we so choose to go backwards. Um, but sometimes it pops up where we might need to do it. So that concludes this video. So all, again, all we were really doing is we were just looking at the different ways we can loop through all the worksheets. So the first one, it's just the basic method of just looping through the worksheets collection. The second one, we actually formally declared our sheets collection and we saw that we can't do it as worksheets, we have to do it as sheets collection. Uh, and then in the third method, we use the, this workbook method. And then in the last three examples, we uh, went from four each loops to four loops. So we can actually just iterate it by just counting the worksheets. We realize that we can actually set the intervals between each uh, loop. So we can say one, then three, then five, then, you know, so on. And then in the final example, we realize we can go backwards if we so choose. Not many examples where we would do this, but it's nice to know we can do it. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions or you have any comments that you want to put below, please put them down. Uh, you know, and it always helps if you like and subscribe. We always appreciate that. But uh, we'll see you in the next video. So uh, thanks for watching. We appreciate it.